What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. For today's video, we're going to review this new smart battery from Lee Time. As mentioned in the first video in the new Digipeter build series, we're looking to upgrade our remote Digipeter setup with a new battery that can deal with cold temperatures. And that's what we're looking at doing with this new battery here from Lee Time. But will it make the cut? Join me as we test it and let's find out if it does. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. As mentioned in the first video for the new Digipeter series, the battery we were using was a lithium-based battery and charging them in below freezing temperatures is bad for them. The battery we were using didn't have any sort of method for controlling charging and freezing temperatures. And while we don't live in the harshest climate, it does get below freezing at times, which means our battery was being charged in these conditions. Now that I'm aware of this issue, I wanted to find a battery that would be able to charge in freezing temperatures or have a way to prevent charging when the temperature gets below freezing. Now you'll see some of these lithium iron phosphate batteries that have a BMS in them, which stands for battery management system, which is meant to monitor and protect the battery from certain conditions. But not all BMSs are equal though, so make sure you get one that fits your needs. The previous battery we were using, for example, does have a BMS, but but no low temperature cutoff, which is what we need for our setup. Lee Tom reached out to me to review their latest battery and their name came up pretty often with a lot of good reviews during my research for a replacement battery. So I was happy when they reached out to me to review their latest offering. So I've decided to test this out for our new Digipeter setup. The first thing I checked when they reached out, of course, was does it have a BMS and does it have low temperature protection? And according to them, it does, but we'll be testing this here in a bit to verify before we deploy to our remote Digipeter. Before we get into that though, let's take a better look at the battery. The overall quality of the battery appears to be good and I'm impressed that it's a 100 amp hour battery that's group 24 sized, which is only slightly larger than the previous 50 amp hour battery that we were using before and it can still fit in the case that we're planning on using for it. One thing you may notice is this battery is a smart battery with Bluetooth and they have a QR code to download their mobile app to monitor and control the battery with ease from your phone. I can see this being really useful for home use, use in an RV, or another use case where you'll be in Bluetooth range on a regular basis. For our use in a remote Digipeter setup where we won't be near the battery, this isn't a big selling point for us, but I can see this feature being really useful in those other use cases. Since our Digipeter is running off a Raspberry Pi, I did reach out to Lee Time and see if there's a way to interface with the battery over Bluetooth using Linux, which would be really useful for us as I was hoping to be able to do some scripting to include the battery level in APRS beacons or other packet radio methods. Sadly, it doesn't have that capability at the moment, unfortunately. It would be cool to be able to do this though, and I've made a feature request with them for this, so we'll have to see what becomes of it. I am curious about the app though, so let's have a look at it. As mentioned earlier, the app can be downloaded by scanning the QR code on the battery, and there's an app available for both Android and Apple. After downloading the app, you'll notice that it does require you to create a login, which I'm not a fan of. I could understand this requirement if it was cloud-based, which I'm also not a fan of, but at least it's understandable to make the connection. In this case though, we're connecting directly to the battery via Bluetooth instead of the cloud via Wi-Fi, so this really shouldn't be needed. Other than that, I do like the app though. It's well laid out and easy to use and connecting to the battery was easy as well. If you have multiple batteries and need to know which one is which, they have a wide array of badges you can select for each battery to help distinguish between them, which of course I selected ham radio for my use case here. Selecting the battery will bring you to a screen with current info on the battery. As we can see here, info is provided like the current battery percentage on top and things like the current wattage and amperage being output or input in my case since it's currently being charged. Below that we have the current voltage and remaining capacity in amp hours. Then we have a section with these three icons here where we can check the cell balance status, the overall cell status, and the current status of the BMS, which is the battery management system. Then below that we have additional info like the serial number, temperature, cycle times, and firmware version. 
Then if we select this control switch on the bottom right, we can do things like control this discharge switch on the top here, which allows you to turn off the voltage going to the battery terminals, but keep Bluetooth turned on so you can continue controlling the battery. Really handy for the safe transportation of the battery or if you want to remotely turn whatever is connected to it on and off. Then there's also a power off button to completely turn off the battery, Bluetooth and all, which I imagine will be good for long term storage of the battery so it doesn't go dead with the Bluetooth turned on. To turn the battery back on in this case, you just need to connect the battery to a charger to wake these systems up and regain control via Bluetooth. Really nice app that would be great for a home or RV setup like I mentioned earlier. Just not a great use for our remote digipeter setup though since we won't be within Bluetooth range of it on a regular basis. Lee Time does offer batteries with low temperature protection without Bluetooth and I like this battery enough so far to where I may purchase one of those to use at the remote digipeter site and use this one at home to charge via the solar panels I have outside my house and provide a solar powered backup to some of my radios and computer network equipment. But now for the moment of truth. Will it do what we need it to do in below freezing temperatures, which is protect itself and stop taking a charge if the temperatures get below freezing? To test this, we'll use this clamp meter here to check and see if we have current running through the wire going to the battery. As we can see now, nothing is showing up on the clamp meter, but as soon as we plug in a 2 amp charger here, we can see that it starts to register on the meter. After confirming that we're able to see that, we'll just simply throw the battery in the spare chest freezer that is sadly lacking deer meat. This is where the app will become really handy as we'll be able to monitor the current temperature and know when it's ready to be taken out of the freezer to see if it'll reject taking a charge and protect itself. So we'll let that sit in the freezer for a bit and check the app periodically to see when we're below freezing. Based on the temperature reading from the app, it looks like we're now below freezing and ready to test and see if it rejects taking a charge. So let's plug the charger back in and with our clamp meter ready to go to monitor what's going on through the wire to the battery. So here we can see it starts charging, but then the battery management system kicks in shortly after and blocks the charging to protect itself. So that's perfect and just what we were after for our use case here. Based on their product page, it will also do over temperature charge protection, but I don't really have a safe way to test that and I don't like the idea of putting a battery in the oven, so I'm not going to test that out myself. The product page mentions a long list of other protections as well, such as over voltage protection, low voltage protection, over current protection, short circuit protection, and overload protection, making this a very full featured BMS to help protect the battery from a wide array of conditions. So this is a great battery overall for the price, which at the time of this video is just over $300. And even better yet, Lee Tom has provided me with a 6% off discount code just for my viewers for their entire website. So if you're interested in this battery or any of the other products on their website, just be sure to enter in our discount code of TCC at checkout to see those savings. Links to this specific battery I just reviewed and their website will be included in the video description below if you're interested. That'll do it for this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and then subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you won't miss out on upcoming videos, including the rest of the remote Digipeter series. Thank you all and have a good one.